What are sports? They are living, breathing works of art performed on the largest stage imaginable. It's the grand spectacle. It's a place where champions are crowned and greatness is displayed. In the world of sports, women have been overlooked and misrepresented for decades in an industry they have every right to be a part of. There are definitely times in my career where it has been difficult being maybe the youngest person on staff or the only woman on staff. Uh, it, it, it certainly, uh, it's, it's a challenge sometimes. Sometimes it's not, but there are certainly times when it is. My name is Ali Forbes. I am an assistant professor of electronic media at Texas State University. I come from a small town in a small province on the east coast of Canada called New Brunswick, and I have been working in sports production, including Sports Center, ESPN, PJ Live, uh, Pac 12, NBA, NHL for about 10 years now. And I knew I wanted to be in sports, so I went back to school and I did a one-year sports journalism postgraduate diploma. And that led me to my Sports Center internship, which started my career. Sports is inherently, you know, a male space, a male-dominated space. Broadcasting is inherently a male-dominated space. I do think that times are changing. Even the way that things are changing, like first, the first way to incorporate women in the live broadcast was how? Sideline reporters, right? So you would just get the prettiest woman you could find who could string together some sentences and we'll put her on the sideline and look at how progressive we are because we've got a female as a part of our broadcast. We've got a woman on the sidelines. And so that kind of became the holding place, I think, for women as a part of the broadcast. And that's, that is similarly happening in production. So what I mean by that is if you were to see a woman in a control room, and, and you do nowadays, you're gonna find women who work in production, but um, I would say nine times out of 10, that person is likely going to be the graphics operator. But roles like replay, more likely to be a group of men deciding what the replay is gonna be. Technical director, I have never seen a female technical director in professional sports. That doesn't mean she's not out there. I haven't worked in every control room, but I've worked in quite a few in two different countries now, and I have never once seen a female technical director for a live broadcast for sports. I would really like to see more women in you know, dynamic production roles, not just um, the ones that seem to be designated for uh, women who produce. It's like color and play-by-play. -play. If you've never heard a female play-by-play -play voice, are you gonna be the hiring manager that makes the decision that now everybody who listens is going to, if the very first thing, be jarred by the fact that it's a female voice? When I work with young female sports reporters, they are less inclined to take on those challenges and to try to push themselves into those opportunities for two reasons. One, it feels awkward because they're a female voice doing what has traditionally been reserved for male reporters and, and male play-by-play. -play. But it al also gives other students the ability to say like, no, like the, girl, the girls aren't interested. Women aren't interested in these types of roles. But I'm not sure that that's the case. I just think that we don't see it. So it's difficult to, you know, be the first to move into that space. I think women in sports are definitely making, we're making strides. And it's not that it's happening super fast or super slow. It's just, I think it's coming naturally as a consequence of, of the day and age we live in. My name is Tatiana Torres. I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm an AV technician at Spurs Sports and Entertainment. And we're responsible for any 
in-house operations that go on within Spurs Sports and Entertainment. Right now we own two teams, the San Antonio Spurs and San Antonio FC. And any needs that go on in terms of technology, camera, any live event that happens on the court or on the field, we're responsible for. I've had shows where I've been the only female on the crew, and there are days when there are a lot more of us, like Roseanne's on TriCaster, and Angie's an engineer, and Miranda's on replay. The way our show works is we have a game presentation director, and then a video presentation director. And those two work together to put together the whole show. Abby is our video director, and she worked her way up from the control room exactly like how I'm doing here. She started off as a regular AV tech with the Spurs and then uh, worked her way up to more advanced positions like camera op and technical director until eventually the spot opened up to become our, our head director who directs the in-house side of the games. Starting day one, I was worried that someone would look at me, look at my size, and be like, I'm not, I'm not worth the job, or I'm not gonna be built enough to put in the work. But when I stepped into the control room my very first day, and I saw that Abby was heading this whole, this whole show, this whole boat, this whole operation, it was really, really encouraging. And so she's filled the control room and the court with people that she knows are gonna get the job done no matter their race, size, gender, etc. In the same way that you find, you know, allies who want to be supportive and create space for you, uh, you're going to run into folks who, you know, don't think that you should be in the control room. As I've gotten through my career and I've had more time and more experiences, I'm realizing that that is changing. Um, the expectations and behaviors in the control room, I'm, I'm seeing a change as a result of more dynamic personalities, more women in the control room, more people of color in the control room, just a more dynamic group of broadcasters. I think as a result, uh, we're starting to see a positive change. Constantly being surrounded by uh by strong leadership who also happened to be female did me nothing but good in life. I, I learned that my place in this world is just as equal as any man's and that I can get anything done just as well as any man as well. I have advice for folks who are interested in sports broadcasting generally, and that it's sports is exciting, it is fulfilling. I feel really lucky to get to tell people about my job and my experiences, and you know, everybody that I meet wants to know more about, you know, what this was like or how that works, and so I feel very fortunate. And I hope that for anybody that wants to work in sports broadcasting, it's exciting. There are opportunities are plentiful. Um, but the flip side is it is not immune to a lot of all those other social issues that we face, you know, outside of sports broadcasting. And some of them are personified. So, you know, issues of gender or race are complicated in this space. I think that it's in everyone's best interest for some of these patterns to change uh, and yeah it's not happening as quickly as maybe we would like it but it is certainly happening. I know 
there's only one girl who works frequently on the truck crew. And so I'm like, that's gotta be, that's kind of wild.